In the Medjugorje message not too long ago, Mary said, you have no idea how powerful God is. And you reflect on that a minute and you say, well, he created the universe out of nothing. That's, pr that's pretty powerful. And you think about scripture and say, well, he orchestrated, orchestrated scripture over thousands of years to the story of salvation that we use today. And that's pretty incredible, powerful to do that. And uh, he's done so many things in our lives. But one thing that is probably more powerful for us, his greatest power for us, is his mercy. And whatever we think of God, whatever we think his powers are, we fall short. It's much greater than anything we can imagine. But even in the Old Testament, the Jews recognized how great God's mercy is. And on the Ark of the Covenant, the box that had the Ten Commandments, the gold elaborate box, above that box was the throne of God and it was referred to as the seat of mercy because they recognized how important God's mercy was for them and how bountiful God's mercy was. And today, all of our readings, Old Testament, Psalm, New Testament reading, are all about God's mercy. In our first Old Testament reading from Micah, he praises God for his incredible mercy. He says, who is like you who removes guilt and pardons sin? Who does not persist in anger, but delights in clemency, clemency, mercy, and will again have compassion on us, treading underfoot our guilt? Powerful. And then Psalm 103 praises God's mercy again. It says, the Lord is kind and merciful. He pardons all your iniquities. Not according to our sins does he deal with us. As far as the east is from the west so far, he put our transgressions from us. Wow. And then today in our gospel, we have the very familiar story of the prodigal son. Some people like to refer to it as the merciful father. Okay. And it shows you, you know, just how merciful God is. Now in the New Testament, Jesus puts a face on God the Father. Jesus reveals to us in the New Testament what God the Father is like. And it, theologians say that if you could only have one parable in the New Testament, you'd want this parable of the prodigal son. Because that parable tells us so much about God. It reveals to us what God is like, especially his mercy toward us. Now, in that parable, there's many things in there, but I'm going to just look at a couple of them. Uh, we are like the prodigal son. We have turned away from God, and somewhere we woke up and said, I'm going the wrong way, I need to go back to God. And God rejoices, comes to us with open arms like we heard in the parable, and celebrates for our return, our waking up and going back to him, and uh, he gives us his mercy like that. And sometimes we're like the older brother. Sometimes we think God has gone overboard with his mercy. He's just given out too, he's just being too generous. What we want to see is some cold, hard justice. We're just like the older brother. So just to pick a couple of lessons out is one, we should all return to God whenever we recognize that we've drifted away or gone away from God, or we can get closer to him than we have been. We need to do that. We need to return to God and get close to him. The other is that we should rejoice with God when someone repents and goes back, you know, has, has made a conversion. We should share God's joy with that one person that was dead and come back to life and come back to God. And the third point I'm going to bring up, and to me, I think this is probably the, the biggest one lesson in the, in the whole parable is that whatever we think about God's generosity, whatever we think about how big his mercy is, it's much, much bigger than that. It's much bigger than anything we could humanly think of. I mean, he, his mercy is just that great.